Hey student, watch this video and learn about English vocabulary. More specifically, how to multiply, double, triple, the number of words you know so that you can go anywhere, anytime and talk to anyone. Hey there, I'm Teacher Pricks and I'm going to help you talk to anyone, anywhere, anytime in English. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe to my channel because every week there is a new lesson to help you become a better and more confident English speaker. I'm always doing my best to bring you the very best lesson that I can possibly create. If you have already subscribed, thank you very much. Thanks for being part of this community. Yes, you know what to do. Yes, you do. Hit the like button and invite a friend to watch this lesson with you. <laughs> now guys, here we go. How to multiply the number of words you know. I love talking about vocabulary. You know, inside my academy, I, I love bringing vocabulary workshops, vocabulary challenges, because I know how important it is to know words, to communicate efficiently in English, okay? So guys, here on my channel, I help pre-intermediate, intermediate students in this level, you know, at this level, because it is a very specific level. It's a transition level. And here, guys, to understand people, talk to anyone, anywhere, anytime. At this level, on, continuing, whether you are pre, intermediate, intermediate, advanced, super, reaper, you know, super, duper, advanced, your vocabulary will need to increase. The number of words you know will need to increase. This is a fact, okay? Now, don't worry. You need to be smart about the way you study vocabulary because it's not just about knowing everything. That's not possible. As I say here in the slide, you will never know all the words. And in conversations, this happens to me, it'll happen to you. Don't be upset about it. In conversations in English, there will, there will always be one moment, maybe two, maybe three, when you don't know a word, when you don't know how to say something. This is natural because we are no native speakers. There is always something for us to learn, okay? It happens, it happens okay? I'm sorry, but it does. You know, one thing that I love doing with my BSA, and I'm going to teach you a little bit of what I do with my students, I will share one strategy with you that I use with my BSA, that's how I call my students, baby, sardines in the area. Sardines because sardines are all over the world. They are abundant, you know, they swim together. <laughs> it's true. Now, in every module, my students have a great number of words. Every lesson will bring a lot of words for them to learn, but not just to learn, they have to use. They always create examples for me on the platform and I give them feedback, corrections. And this is a very important part of the process, the context, okay? Creating an example, getting context, learning a word in an environment, connecting with other skills. And there is one strategy that I'm, that I'm going to share with you today that I like implementing with my BSA and another idea that I also give my students, but I'm going to give you guys because right now you're here, you're part of the gang, you're my student too, and I appreciate your watching this lesson, okay? But here we go. This strategy that I like giving my students and this strategy will be efficient to help you eliminate translation, to help you think more clearly and quickly in English and expand the number of words you know, okay? Now, basically, every time my students learn a new word in English, they get explanation and paraphrasing ideas, okay? And what is that? As you can see here on the screen, to help you multiply the number of words you know, it's important to change your learning process. So, this strategy is connected with how you study new words. So every time you learn a new word, you should focus on getting explanations, explanations from it. Okay, from it. Excuse me, I was reading. I, I made a linking sound mistake here. Then the next step is to paraphrase. And what is to paraphrase? That means writing down your own explanation of what the word means. What do I understand? Okay. So this is the explanation and paraphrasing part. When I teach my students new words inside the academy, it is 100% in English. 
I get the explanations from dictionaries, then I adapt to make the explanation easier and more practical. Then what I recommend my students and I always do is write the explanations. You can create your explanations and paraphrase. And I will give you some examples to help you understand, okay? I want you to understand what this is. So let's take a look at one simple word, awesome. Let me know if you know the word awesome in the comments, okay? It's a popular word. I'm sure you should know it, okay? But if you don't, you will learn now. Yay, that's awesome. <clears throat> now, what does it mean? If you Google it, if you look it up, you will see that awesome is an adjective and it describes something amazing, okay? So if you had an amazing vacation, you can say it was awesome. But teacher, I don't know amazing. No problems. We go deep. We multiply. Okay. What is amazing? Amazing is something that is an adjective, excuse me, that describes something incredible, marvelous. Oh, teacher, I had a marvelous vacation. Oh, so posh. Good for you if you use this. Oh, I had a marvelous time traveling abroad. It was amazing. So that's how you learn. So maybe the first explanation you get on the dictionary will not be clear. Oh, but I don't know, amazing. Awesome, amazing. I don't know. What's amazing? Then you go and you look it up. What's amazing? Amazing is something really, really, really nice. Marvelous, incredible. That is so good, it's incredible, okay? And that's how you begin to multiply and it's in English. And this will help you think more quickly in English because all the explanation, all the practice is in English. And the next step is paraphrasing. So I can, here in the paraphrasing, there are two possibilities, okay? As you can see here on the screen, you will learn, you can create a phrase or you can give an explanation, okay? So depending on the word, I can give an explanation. Depending on the word, I can create an example. I can do both, okay? If it's easy to create an example, create the example. If it's easier to describe what it is, describe what it is. So especially with objects, it's easy to explain. And if possible, create the example. So these are two ways for you to practice. I got the definition, then what do I do? Here, I created an example. An example. I had an amazing time. I had an awesome time living in the US. I had a marvelous time living in the US. So here, you are learning based on English definitions, synonyms, and examples. Your examples can be a sentence to paraphrase what you learned, or something connected with your life. So you can either become a teacher and explain again, oh, so that's paraphrasing. Okay, so this word means something really nice and fun and incredible, marvelous. Paraphrasing, it's not an object, so it's difficult to paraphrase. You, you will use synonyms to do that. But I can also create an example. Oh, I had a marvelous weekend. Really, tell me about it. I wanna know it all. So that's the idea, okay? Here, I created an, an example because it's an adjective. Adjectives can easily, can be easily used to describe experiences. And when you do that connected with your life, it's even better, okay? <clears throat> this is something I always tell my students inside the academy. Give me examples, but these examples need to be connected with your life. One moment. Anyway, moving on, make sure to hit the like button, share this video with your friends. I also have an amazing and awesome study plan. Check the, the, the information in the description. An amazing, a marvelous listening workshop program. Check it out, okay? I'm sure you're going to like it. Many people are asking me about my academy. My academy at this moment is closed. I will open registration very soon, okay? Stay tuned, stay here on my social media, you will know. But I will appreciate if you hit the like button. That is already the best thing you can do for me. And the really most awesome thing you can do for me is share. <laughs> share and be part of the gang, okay? Now guys, moving on. 
moving on extra idea now here is another strategy that i want to share with you i also recommend my babies to do that i'm always giving my students workshop inside my academy we have a, a, a workshop not like here on youtube it's on zoom only with my babies we have activities we get together we speak english we practice my babies yo my bsa and the extra idea will focus on what you use the most okay and what is that to know this there are two options you can think oh what words do i use the most and write them down or you can get a question in english you know some something for you to talk about and you record yourself talking for two minutes three minutes you know and after that watch yourself and pay attention to the words you use the most good nice awesome i use awesome a lot <laughs> this is me okay i use awesome all the time it's awesome amazing uh so these are words i use the most so you will pay attention okay oh what do i use the most so you can do this record yourself speaking about something and pay attention to the words you use the most you watch yourself after you finish of course or you can just sit down, grab a piece of paper and write down. And I want you to do this, okay? Post in the comments. I, let's do this exercise together. After you finish watching this video, post in the comments. I'm reading the comments. I reply to as many comments as possible, okay? Now, you will make a list. And in this list, I want you to write one verb, one adjective, one adverb, one noun and one connector connector conjunction okay uh, words that you use in phrases to connect phrases to describe contrast uh, consequence result connect something that connects phrases to give ideas to show contrast the difference you name it okay and here i created i posted my examples these are popular words that students use all the time there is nothing wrong with these words. Okay, nothing wrong. My goal is to help you multiply. So, as I was saying, nothing wrong with these words. And your next step will be to use an online dictionary. English to English, okay? No translation. So, English to English dictionary, and there you will search one synonym or two or three or four. No, I'm kidding. One or two, no problems, okay? For each word in your list. So, here we go. Think. What are some synonyms? Guess, suppose, ponder, be under the impression. These are synonyms for think. Synonyms for nice, pleasant, delightful, lovely. Synonyms for very, highly, incredibly, really, so, super. Opinion. In my opinion, the phrase in my opinion. The way I see it, I reckon that. In my view, it's view, it seems to me that. These are possible ways. But, however, even so, there are many more, okay? Now, guys, what's the goal here? You don't need to, to find two, three, four, five, six synonyms. No, one is enough. So this is step two. Step three will be go back to strategy one that I do with my babies, okay? Once you find, once you find the synonyms for the words you picked, it's time to create an example with each one. So now we go back to the first strategy. This is what I do with my students. I give them simple explanations and then I ask them to create examples connected with their lives, okay? Sometimes paraphrase the examples, use the par paraphrasing technique, okay? So here I have one very good example. Let's think of the word nice, okay? Nice, I used the synonym lovely, pleasant, delightful. I want to use lovely and here, it's very important. This will determine how much you remember, okay? Because there's something about our brain. Maybe you don't know me so well, but I'm a master practitioner of NLP. And in NLP, we learn better ways to learn new information. 
in a strong way so that we don't forget it, okay? And using emotions is one of the best ways to learn anything, good or bad, okay? And what can we do? Why do I say use memories connected with your life, examples connected with your life? Because in examples connected with your life, there are emotions behind them. And the example that I created was so strong that I was, as I was preparing the lesson, I got really emotional because it reminded me of someone I love dearly and that is no longer here with us. She passed away many years ago and it was devastating to me and to everyone around her because she was one of the kindest, most generous woman I have ever, I have ever met. Such a wonderful human being, but unfortunately she passed away, okay? And here's where I tell you, emotions are powerful. Use your emotions to grow, to expand. So here we see, my neighbor is lovely. This is, this is in, in my opinion, this is lazy. This is lazy work. My neighbor is lovely. My neighbor is nice. My neighbor is lovely. Okay, who's your neighbor? Give it a name, give it a story. Of course, a real one. This is strong. You will remember lovely way more if you connect it with something meaningful. So now I will do the example again, but now I will talk about my neighbor. When I was a child, so I'm going back to the past. This is true. When I was a child, I had a lovely neighbor. Her name was Nilda, N-I-L-D-A, Nilda. And here, and after I created the example, I, I, I made myself some coffee, by the way. And as I, as I was making coffee, so many memories rushed back in my mind. And I almost started crying because she was, as I said, the kindest woman I've ever met. She was so lovely. She was really lovely. She helped my family and I so many times when I was a child. She visited me in hospital so many times because I was very sick when I was a child. She was always there visiting me. She gave clothes to me and to my family because we were poor, so we needed a lot of help. And she was always giving us stuff, giving us money, giving us food, giving us her time, giving us her prayers because she prayed so much for my family and I to be better, for me to be healthy. She would visit in me, she would visit me, visit me in hospital and spend the afternoon with me and pray for me. She would give my brother a haircut. I was talking to my brother last weekend. I met him and he was like, oh, remember her? She would give me free haircuts and I was so shy because we didn't have money to pay her. And then she told me that when I got a job, I, I could pay her, you know? But if I didn't have a job, I didn't have to pay her. And she was a lovely, lovely woman, the kindest woman I've ever met. That's an example. I continued and I really thought about that. And I had never thought about this in English. I had never reflected about this memory in English. I'm doing this now and I did this when I was preparing the class. So you see the power of memory, the power of emotion, the power of intentional vocabulary practice. Do you want to multiply your vocabulary? Be intentional. You don't need to know all the words. You need to, words, you need to know words that you will use. So when I describe my neighbor, how amazing she was, how marvelous she was, how lovely she was and how generous she was, I start to think back to the time when she helped me and my family, when she supported us, when she donated food, time, money, and you name it. And that's the strategy that I teach my students. Anyone, anywhere, anytime, yes, but with your life. That's why we learn a language, so that we can go around the world and make connections, talk to people, talk to people at work and communicate our needs our demands, our uh, projects and ideas. You need English to communicate, to be understood by others and to send a message. So every time you think of vocabulary, don't think of just words, but the message you're trying to send. And that's very important. If you want 
to talk to anyone, anywhere, anytime. If you want to go from stuck to speaking. So every time you sit down to make this practice, be intentional. Always be intentional with your English practice. If you want to unlock your English and get out of the pre-intermediate level, the intermediate level, and go to the next level and feel confident about your English, okay? Now, guys, I hope you enjoyed the lesson. If you're watching this video today as I released it, tonight I'm going live on my channel, okay? It's 6 p.m. Make sure to check it out because at night in this live, I will interact with you guys, read the comments, the chat, live, answer questions and give you some exercises. And as I said, bro, you want to be intentional with your practice. Get my study plan, get my listening mastery workshop. They are one of the, my best short programs that will help you be more intentional with your English practice. Thank you so much. Remember to help me by subscribing, by sharing, and by liking. But other than that, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.